When I was two, I was diagnosed with an extremely rare form of dwarfism, metatropic dysplasia. When people see me for the first time, they stare, they laugh, they take pictures. Others are curious. They're tentative when they approach. They want to learn more about me. I'm going to assume that you all fall into that category. <laughs> I'm 15, the same height as an average six and a half year old boy. While the condition is pretty scary, I have a relatively mild form. Those with a severe case may have a spine that grows into the shape of a C, resulting in death from respiratory complications. I have to deal with a lot of symptoms, but a curved spine isn't one of them. Some are really painful, but my life is not in danger. Because of the way my bones grow together and arthritis, it was getting pretty painful to move around. I shared this with my doctor, who said, you need to start thinking about a mobility device, Brandon. <laughs> Immediately, I thought, there is no way you're putting me into a wheelchair or a scooter. I didn't want to have to spend the rest of my life having to constantly look up at people. Well, I mean, more than I have to already. <laughs> <laughs> so the need for assistance was obvious but I was not going for either of those two options. It took about two days, and then a light bulb went off in my head. How cool would it be for me to have something like a Segway? <laughs> when I went to my parents with this idea, my mom said, oh wow, how much is that gonna cost? <laughs> and how much is it gonna weigh? A lot. <laughs> my dad said, you have this idea, so make it happen. If this is what you want, how about you raise the money for it yourself? I was going to make this happen. The only question was, how? I created a Facebook campaign called Help Brad Move. Has anyone ever seen those orange RVA car magnets? They were part of my fundraising efforts, too. For a few months, there was interest in who I am, what I was doing, and why. From this, I gained experience with people and social skills, and raised almost $5,000 in the process. <laughs> that was great, but based on all my research, it wasn't going to be enough but I was not going to let that discourage me. Just after this, my mom went to a trade show for promotional products. There was this gadget, sort of like this one here, being promoted as a high-end toy for rich people. <laughs> she took a picture and texted it to me. I was immediately intrigued. Now, to make a long story short, because I only have four minutes, this led me down a completely different path than what I originally expected. Instead of not having enough money, I ended up with two devices for the money I raised. One that is small and light, and another that comes apart for travel. On this, I can go places that my legs could never carry me. The bottom line is, don't let other people, even a doctor, dictate the experience you're going to have. Take the advice you need, Take the advice you need, then have the courage to innovate your own solution. I'm three foot eight. Enjoy yourself. And with this, I'm four and a half feet tall. <laughs> you could say it's changed my perspective. Still, it's really hard to deal with other people's views of me. This device that helps me to move around without pain draws a lot of attention. People point. They stare. They make fun of me to my face, behind my back, and through the protection of social media. 
Isn't it strange? Technology gave me a way to amplify my voice and created a way for me to get around with this amazing device. Technology gives me the opportunity to share my story, but it also allows others to anonymously hurt me while they hide behind a screen. None of us can allow ourselves to be paralyzed by hate in the world. I want this talk to be a catalyst to propel us forward to use technology for good.